So today, I am going to be taking apart not Zeus. For the most part, I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna take most of it apart. And the reason why is because I need to get basically an inventory of what all I need, and there are some questions that I want to answer um, that I have to just take apart to actually verify and make sure is correct before I go, you know, buying stuff, basically. See, I bought the server and I took the covers off and I looked inside of it and I can kind of see what all was going on, but I haven't actually taken it apart. So there are a couple questions that I kind of sort of think I have the answer to, but I want to take it apart and actually verify that what I think is correct. And whether or not that is correct or incorrect, either way, I'm going to have an answer as far as what I need to order to build out this server. So let's go ahead and start taking things apart. To give you an idea of what this sounds like uh, using the microphone that I'm using today, which is a wireless lavalier mic, uh, I'm gonna power it on before I take apart the first part, which is going to be the backplate, because I wanna see what uh, backplate connections I have. I think I only have two connections. I think there's two backplates here that run like like this. So I think with what I have, I think I know what I have to upgrade to as far as uh, a, a SAS controller to get better speeds. But I wanna power this on first because part of this disassembly is going to be taking out all of these fans. And then once I get these taken out and get a bunch of stuff disconnected, I want to power on the rest the computer without all of these fans so this will give me a good judgment of what all of the fans sound like being on and then what the computer sounds like being off or better yet what the power supply is going to, or the power supplies are going to sound like without super loud fans on this part so this is kind of like a testing thing for me just to see if i need to focus on the power supplies in terms of noise or if i can handle how loud they are you know, as they are. So it's a good test. And powering on now. And this will make it stop like beeping at me because there's a little anti-warning thing here or anti-alarm button that I can push. And now the beeping turns off. That's because I'm only using two power supplies out of the four right now. So no matter I pull those out or don't plug them in or anything, is if there's not four of them hooked up here, every time it boots up, it's gonna scream at me. So that's one thing to focus on and make me question whether or not I wanna use this, but either way, here we are. But this should give me a pretty good idea of what it sounds like before, and then I'm gonna disassemble this stuff. Okay, I think that's enough. So like I was saying, I had some of them that weren't being used. I only have two of them. I actually had both of these pulled out at one point and didn't shut it up. Um, this thing requires at least four power supplies running with an active power connection or it's going to beep on first boot. So um, either way, got to unplug these just to make sure, you know, there's no power that's going to screw anything up, even though it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be taking out and replacing the motherboard, but still. And now to remove all of these drive cages. It's kind of the first step, really. Ta-da! Okay, I'm just kidding. I don't want to do that. You know, a little, little 40 terabytes sitting in here for my test server that will eventually be back in here for the real server. Okay, so the first thing I'm kind of noticing, I'm gonna switch over to my phone just because it's, it'd be easier to get in here, but I'm kind of noticing that there looks like what could be some sort of a liquid damage. I think it might be on the surface because it's coming off there. Yeah, so it's, it's coming off, but there's something, something got spilled in here and that's kind of, that's kind of worrisome, I think. That almost looks like, it looks like there's a plastic cover over uh, this PCB. So. Um, that looks like it might have gotten in between it. I don't know if that is going to affect anything. If you look at this, if you see, oh, I, I just don't like how that looks. Look at that. That kind of worries me a little bit. 
Like, I, I wonder... I don't know if I've tested that one or not. I know I've tested random ones throughout here, but I don't know. That kind of worries me a little bit. I'm going to have to take it apart and look at it more. But as I can see, again, there's two back plates here, uh, two of them, one on each side. So, you know, that's all right. I kind of already knew that, but I want to take it all apart first, which means I'm going to have to take apart uh, or take out these screws which is a bunch of them on each side before I can pull out any of this stuff. But I'm gonna take out the fans and just everything in this area right here. The good thing is this part is actually really simple to take apart. So these are just a matter of like pushing and pulling these out. I guess I should probably unplug them first. And because there's so many screws and you know, I don't wanna have to do all that manually, power tools. Okay, I had one screw that was kind of not coming out right, but I had to use a manual screwdriver. Now let's see if that is gonna loosen these up or not. Or, if I was completely wrong and didn't even have to take those out. Nope. That I need to get to. Actually, yeah, I think there's a screw underneath the side rails. There's two screws on each one. So, yeah, I gotta take off the rails. Ah, these were actually really simple to take off. There's just two screws, but they slide on. So, I got one little locker here. You just pull that out and it slides right off. So, they're pretty flimsy, pretty easy to get off. But, it did expose the other screws down here that I missed. So once I take these off, then hopefully the middle stuff will come out. Uh, damn it. Okay, now that everything is taken off, let's see, they should. Ah, uh, there's one screw in there. I mean, they're all loose. How do you? There's screws in there too. I need like a little, little miniature screwdriver. I don't, I don't know how to do that. All right, time to go look for tools. I've got a gaggle of tools up here. That should work. I think beer, the beer, beer minimal. Let's see if I can get back here. This, this should work no matter what, but I kind of want something that's short. I don't know. The problem with this whole setup here is that you don't really know what any of them look like until you take them out. I think all of these. Uh, so, what I'm gonna have to do is probably, probably use this tool. I think this should work as intended. Let's see. It's basically just a, a bit. Use a bit to take it all the way out. Just needed to break it loose with something else. There you go. That worked. And with that taken out, this should maybe slide right out. Nope. It's still, still hung up. Well, this is annoying. Let's push both sides out. There we go. Boom. Taken out. Actually, if I would have thought this through, I would have taken this one out first because then I would have access to this, this, and this all with a regular screwdriver. But, you know, somebody doesn't think these things through. Not gonna point any fingers. far I got to get into this to uh, get these fans out. I feel like they'd be pretty easy or they should be pretty easy to get out in terms of swapping them, but maybe not. Probably still plugged in. Yeah. Like these should be easy to get out. Like if you want to swap fans, you don't, I would imagine you wouldn't need to take apart the whole dang thing, but so far, it's looking like you kind of have to. 
left right out. These don't break. Got a nice little zip tie there that's attached to the cage. Well, that's neat. There we go. Okay, now, without breaking anything else, take those off. Take this out. And then take these out. Looks like Looks like this whole thing all just connected directly to the P, uh, PWM connectors on the motherboard. So this all comes out on a hole. Um, but now that I got these out, I can... What's this jankity setup right now? Jeez. Okay, so I got everything taken apart and I'm looking what this whole backplate thing has with it. So this backplane, which is 24 ports each, this backplane has three ports right here. Uh, three ports on each one. So basically what I'm looking at is I don't have a lot of experience uh, in this particular with SAS controllers and, and all this other stuff, the cables and the cards and things like that. So right now I have two set of cables. These have eight channels each and it's one card and this is like a six gigabit per second card. So I know this is going to be a speed hurdle for me, uh, which is why I'm looking at this so I could figure out exactly what I can buy to make this the fastest possible. So Right now I have two of these connections. This is a SAS cable or whatever that has eight, uh, eight lanes per. Um, and it's connected to two of them. So I think this is only, or I know that this is, a, this is only an eight lane card. So that means I have eight lanes spread across 48 drives, which means that if I'm doing a parity rebuild or anything that's gonna be stressing the entire thing, it is going to be super slow. So I have to find out the best possible solution to get everything working at once, um, or at least as much as possible to make it a ton faster than what it will be if I just have these connections, which means I'm gonna have to have all three of these hopefully connect on each one, and I'm gonna have to get either one big beefy card that can handle it all, or probably at least two uh, LSI cards to handle it all. I don't actually know. The thing is, is I, I don't actually know for sure what would be the best setup? Having uh, the back planes that have three ports on each one, you know, that's let's say eight lanes per 88824, which would fit perfectly. If I had basically enough connections to serve each one individually, I'd have the fastest rebuild, which might be why I suffer speed wise in Zeus when I'm writing to my, my uh, array. While I'm actually writing to it while, you know, doing parity it definitely moves pretty slow. I mean, we're talking like 30 megabytes per second. And I've always been on this thing like where well, that's just Unraid, that's just parody, that's just how it works. But I think with what I'm looking at now, I really don't know how Zeus works as far as what cards and what speeds and how many lanes are, act are active at the same time. Um, so I'm pretty convinced now that maybe it's just something on my part where uh, I solely underestimated you know, like how important the SAS controller is, I, looking at this now, know that I need to find the best possible solution. So uh, this SAS card here is definitely going to need to be replaced because right now it has a breakout of eight. So these, these eight cables uh, wrapped into one, this is good, but it's only good for eight at a time. And I need three of these connected to this back plane in order to make it work uh, at 100%. So, I try to get on. I try to get on Discord actually and talk to uh, someone about it. And you know they have a little bit of experience with this. But as far as knowing exactly which card is going to give me the best possible performance, because right now this card is a PCI Express 2.0 card. It is the. I will list the model number off of the eBay listing. Um, that way I can give it to you exactly. I think it's like a 9218 8i, something like that. So basically this thing might be pointless or worthless for this build uh, specifically, but that's what I wanted to do, or that's what I wanted to accomplish taking this apart today. Because one, I know now that I have no way of utilizing bigger fans uh, in this little cage in the front, which is kind of one of the questions 
This is one of the questions that I wanted to ask, you know, can I fit a 140? And as far as I can tell, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to fit 140s in the front here. So I'm gonna have to stick to 120s, which is fine. Uh, I don't wanna do any kind of cutting or modification like I did with Zeus. Now that I get everything taken apart, everything seems to work really well as it is right now. But all of these fans are basic fans and I'm gonna look these up, but these things are super loud. So what I wanna do is replace all of these 120 millimeter fans with uh, Noctua fans because the Noctuas are gonna be a lot quieter out of the box just because they're higher quality fan. Thankfully, I do have a connection with Noctua so they can help me out or they are willing to sponsor you know, uh, some fans for this build. So, you know, shout out to, to Noctua for helping me out there, but I told them to wait off or to hold off on sending those to me because I wanted to make sure 100% exactly what I needed. So now I know. So I have three ports on each backplane, right? And I basically I was talking to on Discord and, and with Liquid Syphilis Cypher and he looked up and he found that, you know, other people have been going through the same thing or similar situation, but uh, he basically found that um, there's an in port, an out port, and an in and out port. And from my understanding, again, with help from Discord, um, one is used to communicate with the board uh, with the SAS controller. So you have one port that's used for your, your IO, your in and out. Uh, a second one, which is basically a, a redundancy. So if the first one fails, the second one can kick in. And the third one <clears throat> is used for daisy chaining. So if you want to connect one backplane to the other backplane, you can do that. Uh, of course, there's probably going to be some bandwidth uh, dropping there, but still that's what the ports are for. So what I was looking at, I'm like, well, you know, if you have this that has two uh, mini SAS or whatever in the back, and these are, you know, each connected one to each backplane, but there's three ports on each back. So why can't you just have three cables with, you know, eight things in each one and then, you know, triple the, sp the speed or whatever. So <laughs> I'm kind of rambling here because I'm stumbling through this. Yes, I don't know exactly how all this works. So I think this is going to come down to, I'm asking anyone to comment below, not with speculation. I'm asking for legitimate information for people who actually have experience with this or actually know what they're talking about. Um, I'm not looking for speculations and this might work and that might work. I'm asking literally like for experience. Um, <clears throat> what is my best upgrade? Cause this is a 9210, I believe something like that. Eight I, uh, P it's PCI gen two. And I found online, again, help through Discord. Thank you very much, Josh. Found online, you know, one that's a 9300. Uh, it's a Gen 3, so it's gonna have a 12 gigabit uh, per second versus the old one, which is only six. Uh, gig is it gigabit or gigabyte? Either way, it's a 12 gig versus t uh, six gig. So this one's a six, uh, 9300 is a 12. So I think that overall should give me a, a decent upgrade and that's only using two connections still. So one PCI slot, two connections, and that would be my upgrade path. And I can get those off eBay for like a hundred bucks. So bonus points, that's cheaper. But, and I'm not focusing on the price here because you know, if I have to buy something, I have to buy something. I want the best possible performance when doing something like, let's say a parity rebuild where all of my drives are gonna be, you know, reading and writing at the same time. Um, I need something that will give me the best possible speed out of these two backplates that I have. Uh, from what I understand, I can't use more than one port on each one to gain any significant speed boost. But the question that I have, I think, that relates to this is that if I'm using one card with two connections connecting to two backplanes, and this one card is an eight lane card, is it physically limiting each port to only use in four lanes, which means I have four lanes going to a 24, you know, backplane or 24 port backplane and it's switching the drives with only four lanes being used at the same exact time. Uh, or can I use, let's say one of these cards or one of the new cards, the 9300 only use one port out of the back, connect one plane, and then make it to where that plane is using at least eight ports at the same time. So let's say if I get one of those $100 9300s and I use both ports, does that mean I'm limited to four each backplane? 
Or if I get two of those cards, use one cable each, would I basically effectively be potentially doubling my speed as far as being able to access eight drives per backplane at the same exact time? Or am I completely ridiculously and utterly wrong and I have no idea how this works and none of that really matters and really the best upgrade I could do is just maybe go up to the 9300, get 12 gig uh, connection speeds and then call it a day. So that, that just leave comments below if you know exactly how this works. I really want some some real you know information here because I'm making an inventory of what I need to buy and this is important. Okay so this is another thing that I wanted to look at uh, doing this teardown today was the power situation. So as you can see I got dual CPU and of course I have two CPUs plugged into the motherboard which is normal uh, for a dual CPU system. Now the new system I'm going to be running is probably only going to be one CPU so I think, depending on what that board requires, I should have at least two eight pins available. I have three, this one's kind of split, just in case you have a board that only needs two. Um, but what that means is that I can, at bare, if, let's say if I was gonna use this, the, the graphics card that I wanna put in the new system, I'm going to assume is going to need at least one PCIe power connector. And this, entire thing does not have a PCIe power connector in the power supplies like that are built in and now that I'm kind of looking at everything I want to keep the power supply the same basically I like the way the power supplies are set up and if I can make them quiet enough I want to keep them the way they are because I like the redundancy and I like how it's all ju I, I just like how it fits and I don't want to remove this cage and cut into the metal and do a bunch of modifications that are going to overall could potentially be either a, a pain in the butt or, and b you know, backfire on me. So I like having these SATA, uh, these SSDs in here. That's nice. I like having uh, the four power supplies. That's nice. I like everything so far, but I have to make sure that I have enough power. So let's just say I want to get the RTX 4000 or maybe a, a P4000. I, I'm going to need at least one PCI Express power connector. And since I have at least one left over, possibly after I switch to the new chip, I'm gonna have two left over, but since I'm gonna have at least one left over, I know that I can go online, I can get an adapter that's gonna take the, the CPU connector, the power from the CPU, and um, adapt it over to a PCI Express uh, power connection, which is great because that means I can use what's built in and I can just buy an adapter and then I'll be able to use, let's say a P4000 or whatever I want to put in here, a uh, graphics card wise, that's going to be able to, to be powered by, you know, what's built into the power supplies already. And on top of that, I also do have some uh, SATA power, extra, extra SATA power cables in here as well. If I do want to add more internal SSDs, which is probably going to be a thing I don't know where I'm going to mount them yet, but it will probably be a thing for me to have more SSDs, just depending on how things are going to line up. But, you know, again, I'm not really sure on that yet, but this is just something that, you know, I got a plan for. Now, something that is kind of bugging me, and I, I usually don't have that much OCD, but something that is kind of bugging me is going to be this mess here. Um, so this is just like a plastic cover that's on top of it. But I can tell that there was something in here that was spilled. Uh, because it's just there's residue and stuff left over so I don't have any reason to take this apart further as far as removing the backplane but I do want to take off these screws if I have to and I think yeah I have to remove these screws um, but I, I think I want to take off this and use some alcohol and get this cleaned up just because that's bugging the crap out of me I really need to clean this up. Not that it's that big of a deal, I just don't want it on there, it's disgusting. Okay, that, <laughs> oh, that was, that was a little gross. I don't, I don't know what that's from, but that's disgusting.
So what did I learn today? Well, I confirmed one thing today, and that is I can only fit 120 millimeter fans in here unless I wanna do some modifications, which is just fine. Um, so I'm definitely gonna go ahead and move forward with just six Noctua fans, probably the 3000 RPM fans. And then if I need to put a power reducer on them, depending on how the temperatures are, I could do that to make it quieter. Um, two, I did learn that I do have the power connector I need probably in order to power something like a P4000, for example, in this server. Uh, so that's good. So that means I can still use these power supplies if I want to, if it's not too loud. Now, I've never actually powered it on without the other fans, but I promised I would do that. So I am gonna do that here in just a second. And the third thing I learned is that I'm limited on the speed with the back plates just because of how the back planes are. So um, what I'm looking at is I don't know if I'm gonna run one card or two, but I'm asking the community to see what would be the best setup. So uh, I will put pictures of all of the stuff at the end of this video. I'm gonna take some close up pictures of all the product stuff. So if you wanna look at that and look in more detail of the exact model number, stuff like that, and tell me exactly what you think would work. Just assuming I'm gonna have all the PCI slots I need, I'm gonna build everything out with you know new and current generation stuff so i should have plenty of you know pci stuff but i want to know exactly what would be the best scenario in my head it makes sense to have two of these cards running with just one of these connectors going to each one from each card so that way if it isn't let's say an eight lane P uh, pci uh, sas controller then at least eight lanes would be used on the one back plane at the same time so i'd have total of 16 you know, lanes going at the same time rather than eight being split between the two of them. So I'd only have like four going at, at the same time. So if that doesn't make sense and I'm just completely ridiculously and utterly wrong, let me know. If there's no uh, benefit here to running two SAS controllers, let me know. Now let's, let's power it on. I'm sitting about the same distance with my little lavalier microphone here, sitting about the same distance uh, from the server. So you should be able to get a pretty good idea of what it's gonna sound like different. Uh, from having the fans or not having the fans. Ooh. Okay, so after powering this on, I think, I think there's a big deal here and that something I did not even really think about. The fans on the CPU coolers are insanely loud. I wonder if that's what I was hearing primarily. I mean, I know they're all loud, but I think the CPU fans themselves are loud. So I'm gonna unplug those because honestly, I don't really care about them. This is just not gonna be used afterwards, at least not anything immediate. So I think I can power it on long enough to see what it sounds like. Not necessarily do a stress test, but let's see what the difference is. I just, I only want to hear the power supplies. It's a little loud, but that's not bad. Turn that off now. Okay, that is not bad at all. Um, it probably could be a little bit quieter, but the power supply fans are really tiny fans. Actually, I do remember somebody sending me a link to some power supply fan replacements for these. Um, so I was told in that link that these power or these fans could be replaced with a different a different fan so maybe i can disassemble this and take a look at the, the fans i think i'm going to do that real quick while i'm here do you ever start something like yes i'm going to do this and then like into it you're you're kind of like no I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. See, thing with power supplies, there's 
probably capacitors in there and stuff. I mean, I was like conscious of this. I'm like, I think I could like shock the crap out of myself or kill myself. So, uh, and then when I opened it up, it's like, nope, risk of shock, don't touch. Yeah. But looking at this power supply, I just, uh, looking at the fans on the power supply, I'm just kind of sort of thinking that I don't know if I want to mess with it. So I'm just, I'm just considering that maybe, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to spend a little bit more time. I want to make sure I play it safe basically. Um, so this might be a thing. This might not be a thing. Um, but I'll worry about that later for right now. It's making me a little nervous and I don't really want to mess with it. So yeah. Well, anyways, guys, that was me breaking down my server and exploring some of the stuff and trying to figure out the best possible way to approach this. Basically, I am waiting for Threadripper. And um, I have considered if I get the fans and the controller and everything else like ordered and, and it's all in. And, and also, I'm going to look at a new uh, rack. So if I get like the new uh, server cabinet and I get, you know, the LSI card or cards that I need, I get the Noctua fans that I need, you know, there is a chance that if, if all that happens before Threadripper or whatever I end up deciding on upgrading to, uh, comes out or doesn't come out or whatever, then I might consider just throwing the 3900X with the P2000 in there, um, as a temporary measure to get new, not Zeus up and running just because I'm antsy and I want to mess with stuff and, I've wanted to been digging into this thing forever, but I just haven't had the chance. So uh, this is all super exciting to me. This is super scary to me. And uh, I don't know. Let me let me know in the comments down below what you think uh, I should do with the LSI SAS controllers. I definitely would love to hear your thoughts. I want actual experience, you know, like seriously, if there's any doubt and you, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm not even going to like listen to what you're saying. So I don't need to, you could try this or you could look into this and this might work statements. No, I want you to be like, no, this backplane can only handle this and this is your best path. This is what's going to give you the most performance out of it. So I need answers, not troubleshooting steps. If you have any answers, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.